Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for today's episode of Real Estate Disruptors. Today we've got Eric Sage with ericbuyshomes.com and he's here to share how he's flipped, moved, lease option, buy and hold, and all these other different creative strategies for over 500 properties and doing about three seller carry transactions per month. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm Steve Trang, broker owner of Stunning Homes Realty, co-founder of the OfferFast app, the one app you need for wholesaling, and I help people become real estate entrepreneurs. If you're excited for today's show, please give me a wave, please give me some thumbs up. And before we get started, I started this show because I want to give back to our community. Uh, I had a lot of struggle when I first started. We've talked about a little bit about some of the struggles you've had along the way, and we want to shortcut that struggle for as many young leaders as possible. I don't charge a dime for this show. I don't make any money doing this, so here's all I ask. This is what it costs for you to listen to this show. If you get value out of this show, please tell a friend. Either share the episode right now, tag a friend below, or tell them your best takeaway from the show later on. That way we can all grow together. And don't forget, this is a live show, so please post your questions. Eric's more than happy to answer them. Uh, we don't have to wait till the second half. You can ask them right away. Um, and so with that, are you ready? Sure. Let's go. Okay. So what got you into real estate? Uh, well, I will, I'll, I'll right give you away. kind of a, I'll give you kind of a, a little history on, on, on my background. It's uh, my backstory is uh, I grew up in a small town, Yuma, Arizona. Uh, my goal in life was to be a professional golfer. Uh, I was very fortunate to uh, play, prof uh, play golf in college, went to the University of Arizona. Cool. Uh, and uh, after that, um, I played professional golf for about three years. Um, got a very, very, I got the opportunity to do it. And mm -hmm. uh, it was a huge blessing. I had a great uh, uh, support group. Um, but after traveling for three years and um, kind of doing my thing, I decided I don't want to do that anymore. So I went to corporate America. Uh, got my first job selling elevators through a friend, through a referral. Elevators. Elevator. Elevator salesman. <laughs> yep. Who do so. you <laughs> contact? <laughs> uh, well, it was a referral. It was a friend of mine was in the business, um, and my golf career, my golf got me in the door. I'm uh, the, the the actual the regional manager that hired me um, took me out golfing after the interview, and yeah. after that it went. From but you're door to door, no, door knocking. Door to door. I mean, we have uh, you, you know you look at all the buildings being uh, erected right now. There's mm. an elevator in there, and right. uh, and so uh, we had repairs, we had service and new construction. So mm. I was kind of involved in that. Interesting. Uh, did that for uh, about six, seven years, and then got into the medical distribution business um, and uh, sold diapers, uh, adult diapers. So we have <laughs> okay. elevators to, di <laughs> to diapers. And right when I started the diaper sales business, I started door knocking pre foreclosures. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't married, didn't have kids, um, and I was always an entrepreneur. I was always looking for ways to make extra money. Right? And what year was this? Um, so that was probably 2003, 2004. Okay. Right. I bought my very, very first rental property in 2003. The wrong way, right? <laughs> Realtor found it. Yeah. Didn't make any money. <laughs> didn't have any cash flow. The whole thing, you know, nothing like I know now, like how to buy a right. distressed property at a discount. So uh, anyway, fast forward, uh, started door knocking, found a house. Um, let me tell you that like my very first door knocking experience. Oh, oh yeah, please. It's crazy. It's pretty cool. So uh, a friend of mine says, you need to start door knocking pre foreclosures. Well, I didn't even know what a foreclosure was, mm -hmm. much less pre foreclosure at the time. And so I picked a list of properties in the area I lived in, which happened to be in Chandler, Arizona. And very first door I knocked on said the house was going to foreclosure on a Monday. Okay. So I knocked on Friday. So you didn't give yourself a lot of time. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have <laughs> cards. I didn't even know what I was, I mean, all I knew is I bought a rental property, right? Right. So anyway, I knock on this door. And so nice house, um, actually, uh, in Warner Ranch. So not far from where this yeah. uh, is being recorded. And uh, knock on the door. Now picture uh, the biggest lineman for the Arizona Cardinals, okay, answering the door. That mm -hmm. would be your vision of who answered. And I'm like, um, hello, uh, I, you're, I, I think your house is going to foreclosure. He's like, no, it's not, and slams the door in my face. I go, hang on a second. So I went back to my car, wrote my name and phone number on a piece of paper and gave it to him and said, hey, if something changes, give me a call. Yeah. First door ever, okay? Sure enough, I get a call. From who? His, uh, sorry, from his, uh, from his wife. So 
they had an issue. Their, their, their uh, house was in foreclosure because their bankruptcy got discharged. So now mm. they're $52,000 in the rears and they need to get the money by Monday at, what is it, auction at two o'clock. Okay, yeah. very first house ever. So now I call, what do I do? I call up my local real estate buddy that sold me my rental property for fair market value or higher mm -hmm. and said, hey man, I got this deal, what do I do? And he's like, I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what a foreclosure is either. Most, real, <laughs> most agents back then, 2003, yeah. 2004, weren't real sure what that was. Right. But a friend of mine, he goes, but you know what, our buddy, um, he doesn't work a lot, but I think he's, um, I think he knows how to do this stuff. Yeah. And I'd actually played in a little, I was at a wedding with, with this guy, um, um, uh, a few weeks before. So I call him up. I'm like, Hey man, I got this deal. He's like, how did you get that deal? I've been door knocking that house for a year and a half. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, God was looking down on me. I have no idea. Right. So anyway, uh, it, it'll go toward, so we ended up saving the house, uh, uh, stopping the sale, saving the house for the family. We worked out a deal. I got paid a fee mm -hmm. and my mentorship, you know, uh, 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 started. Like I started working with this guy cause I'm like, this is, this is awesome. I made a $3,500 yeah. check. We got this house. We saved the people. Mm -hmm. They live in the house still, which, um, probably wouldn't do pre foreclosure bailouts and leave them in the house program anymore. <laughs> right. It worked out for me cause we were, you know, ethical and did it right. But that's what happened. Yeah. So that's, that's the, the, how I found my mentor because I brought him a deal. Right. Well, that's cool. And so then I ended up working for this guy for now, keep in mind, I'm still selling diapers and I'm door knocking uh, from 10 to two on Saturdays um, for pre foreclosure houses. Cause he then set me up on the system. So I wasn't wasting my time. Like pure luck is what happened there. Yeah. And so I started door knocking, working for him and he would show up to the properties with me and we would sign the contracts. And then like the third Mercedes later, it's third new Mercedes later that he pulled up and I'm like, dude, you can't come to these meetings with me anymore. <laughs> I'm driving my civic and we're going to meet because it's intimidating. I thought, you know, right. And so, uh, so anyway, I did that with him for about a year, figured out I had my own money. I, I knew what to do and the mentorship was over and I went and started buying my own houses. And that's kind of how I got into real estate. It was, and uh, I never, never looked back. My wife and my wife and I got married. She has been my business partner ever since. And it's been a roller coaster. If you think about it from 2003 till 2018, right? Yeah. A couple of bumps along the way. <laughs> so we, uh, when we were chatting, you worn many different hats yep. in real estate. So let's just go, what are all the different hats you've worn? Well, I mean, I've always, uh, I, I've been a solopreneur, door knocking, right? Mm -hmm. Finding my own lists and uh, meeting with homeowners, um, acquiring the properties, uh, working with contractors. I will tell you that I've never actually physically worked on a property yeah. because I cause more problems than good. I will literally hurt myself on a job site. We so, have that in common. So I'm not, um, I'm not handy. Yeah. It's, it's embarrassing. So anyway, <laughs> but I know how to buy a house cheap and mm -hmm. I know how to liquidate it. Right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but we've had, we've had tons of employees. We've had no employees. We've had, um, you know, assistants, not assistants, contractors, non-contractors. Um, we've been hard money lenders. We've been, uh, you know, we've been landlords. We've been, we've done all of it. So you've done lease options. Yep. Seller carry assignment was it agreement for sale mm -hmm. subject to. Yep. I mean, any, we had a short sale business, a short sale business, yep, yep. right? You had 125. Y yeah. So, uh, so kind of, so here's what happened. So like, this is the greatest thing about real estate and the cycle we're in, like mm -hmm. from 2003 till now, like the cycles probably been the most extreme ever in our history. Would you say? Yeah, for sure. So, so I started door knocking, basically wholesaling and mm -hmm. I didn't even know it at the time I was right. getting a fee to bring a deal to somebody so mm -hmm. they could do whatever they wanted to with it. Um, but then, um, I went on my own and started doing my own deals and mm -hmm. we would bail people out of foreclosure. We would help them out and then they would refinance and get their, get their, uh, the house back. You know, we'd keep the house as our equity and, and security. And then we'd work through the deal. But there was a time, uh, let's say 2000, let's say 2005 would have been a good time, but mm -hmm. let's say 2006-ish. Um, was when it started flattening off and we were looking good. for equity. There was no more equity in the houses. Yeah. And so I'm, I told my wife, I'm like, I don't know, like we have all these, we have 70 houses, um, the market's doing some weird things. Um, and we don't have, um, there's no more equity deals. Like, what do we do? And this mm -hmm. is before I know what I know now, which there's tons of free and clear houses all over the oh, yeah. planet, 
but I was just searching a different one way. You were right? only searching pre-foreclosures. I was just doing pre-foreclosures, right? Yeah. So, um, and, it, and it was very profitable for us. We were very blessed and, and it worked out. But um, so then we decided, well, wait a minute, what's going to happen to these people that owe more than they, their house is worth? So we started a loss mitigation company. And then that worked out okay. But then we, we, we were spending six to nine months mitigating <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> when the banks didn't even know what was happening. Right. So we they were getting, we were charging fees yet. and then you couldn't charge fees anymore. For, so we just decided, okay, we're going to do a short sale company and we're going to help people get rid of their houses. And, and uh, so we did that, but we did that for, for a period of time where we had 125 deals going at any given time. We had a loss mitigation department of our own. We had realtors, we had marketing team, we had sales guys and it was, it was great. We saved a lot of people's houses. It was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, but then the market started changing. This is a great thing about the cycle of real estate. So when you're in it, the cycle started changing and we're like, wait a minute, we need, we should buy some of these. I mean, this is, I mean, the house down the street I, I had, I bought for 175 at the peak and I can buy the same house for $25,000. You think that's probably a good time to buy? Probably. Probably. Right. So we started buying them. So now we started buying them. Um, when the market crashed, it was a race to get rid of everything, which we did, um, fortunately. And then we started buying them at the bottom and then the market went up and started selling them and then, and then kept a few. Mm -hmm. um, but, but keep in mind, all of this is a very active business. Like yeah. it's very, very active. You're making good money, but you're waking up on Monday and you're like, okay, how many houses are we going to wholesale? How many houses are we going to flip? What are we going to do? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so fast forward to today um, of where we're at today on seller financing. And uh, that, that's what, I, I figured out when I did my lease option program is I provided a ton of value. Mm -hmm. um, I made really, really good money and I, and um, I didn't have to work very hard because at the time we kept the old owner in the house. Yeah. Their intent was to keep it and refinance it. And they did because after six months of good pays and a heartbeat, they were refinancing most right. likely. So we charged them a fair fee and everyone was good. Well, now I was like, I told my, I told my wife this, I said, uh, sit, uh, about 18 months ago, I'm like, where did, where in the, okay, so we have, a, we had a thriving wholesale business. We're doing very well. We have employees, we have this whole thing and we're marketing, we're doing direct mail. I mean, you have these shows with all the direct mail champions mm -hmm. and all the, that uh, talk to people, you know, TTP yeah. and you have internet and all this stuff. And it's a huge expense every month, right? To right. do that. And I'm like, where do we provide the most value, make the most money and work the least? Mm -hmm. It was back to lease option world. That's yeah. where we were like, wait, this is amazing. Let's do that. So we have now fast forward and now we've created that similar model, mm -hmm. right? Um, the only difference is it, instead of lease option, it's seller financing because we wanted to get rid of the expenses that go on of own, being an, a homeowner, right? Right. Well, and when you talked about this in our meeting uh, a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago, it blew my mind. So we're gonna definitely gonna have to redo some things in 2019. Uh, so along the way, you uh, we'll, we'll talk about seller carrying a little bit. But you built your business up, yep. massive team, right? Short sell, that's probably when you were the biggest, I'm, I'm gonna guess, is that when you were the biggest? Uh, yeah, I mean, anywhere from, we would have anywhere from eight to 15 team members, mm -hmm. you know, and then in the wholesale world, we're probably the same, you know. And then you transitioned to a traditional real estate team? Well, so yeah, so what we did was, is, is I would do direct mail. Yeah. Um, and I would take the calls and I would go meet with the homeowners and then I would figure out how to, dispose of it. Mm -hmm. So I was a one man show again, back when we started cycling back into wholesaling. Um, but now keep in mind, I will fast forward. I'm kind of going, I'm kind of going all over the place a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, is, uh, I, I did take a little stint out of real estate for mm -hmm. about probably 18 months Yeah, and bought a different company and was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, I have all these employees again. And, and so it does go back to, uh, it does go back to, I'm going to shut my phone off here so you guys can, there you go. So it does go, it goes back to like managing people, right? Right. Managing people is a challenge. I would say for me, like the it's most. The greatest challenge for every company. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and so, um, so anyway, let's, let's go back to, uh, uh where we're, where we recently were, we had real estate agents. Mm-hmm and real estate agents want to get listings, and but majority of them don't know how to market. They're mm -hmm. not great marketers, or they right. don't have the money or something. And so we're like, okay, let's hire some really good 
uh, real estate agents mm -hmm. to take in all of our leads, right? Go meet with homeowners and buy the properties for me and get paid. Yeah. And if that doesn't work, let's list them, right? Right. So this it's a really, a lot of sense. so we have a nice, we have an army of agents out there doing that. And so, but what, what recently has happened is, is the marketing has gotten so expensive yeah. that the, the margins were just, it just wasn't making sense. And, it, and honestly, um, we, uh, I mean, we had amazing people on our team. A majority of the people, and I tell all the people that come and work with me, is you're gonna, there's nothing proprietary here. I mean, go on the internet, you can figure this out. Yeah. But if you want some confidence, come work with me, learn it like mm -hmm. I did, and then go move on, right. you know, and do it yourself, right? I mean, yeah. that's, that's the thing. That's what I've told anybody. So in real estate, it's very transient to, to, to have that happen. So to keep people on and other than your assistants and stuff, but that that's that's kind of where we're at now. So I was like, how can I run, you know, two, uh, you know, f you know, fifteen to three hundred seller finance deals, mm -hmm. and how does that look, um, employee wise, right? Right. I I can pretty much run that entire business with like one person, other than myself. Yeah. Because you don't own the properties, you don't have taxes, you don't have insurance. It's all being paid, and so that's where I I, I phased our business into. Um, and there's a, there's a combination of reasons why, um, is number one, um, and, and I'll, I'll, we'll talk about this, but the private money side of uh, raising private capital, mm -hmm. private, private money and doing it right and not forming a syndicate and all this other garbage. I, I really <laughs> believe that um, we're providing a ton of value for that yeah. investor, right? Because um, we know how to buy really good properties. Okay, so that's one deal. And then the next is helping homeowners get rid of their distressed property mm -hmm. and, and get them as much as we possibly can and still make make it work for them as quick as possible, as easy as possible. Um, and then ha find a homeowner, a buyer, um, and a realtor and a buyer uh, team that, that can actually um, own a house now that right. never would have been able to own a home. Traditional financing would not have worked for them. They're not going to go to Wells Fargo, Bank of America, or any of these yep. and get a traditional loan because they own a landscaping business or a pool company or a realtor, <laughs> right? <laughs> but they yeah. have a nice, they've saved their money and they can afford the payment. And so that's kind of where I went. And, um, uh, you know, we talked about this earlier, um, that, that I get excited about that. Like yeah. flipping a house and making 20,000 bucks, it's pretty cool. You're revitalizing neighborhoods right? or you're wholesaling and starting the revitalization, which is, mm. has, you know, you have a, there's a purpose there, but, but the whole, um, uh, you know, where people right now are getting displaced. You know, you yeah. go to the areas where we're buying, where the seller financing thing works. Um, they're the buyer, the investors bought these houses from 25 to 60 grand, and now they're mm -hmm. worth 150, right? Yep. As is. Mm -hmm. um, now, what's going to happen to that tenant? They're they where are they going to go? Right. They've lived in a house for 10 years. Well, now they're priced out. Now they're priced out. So how can I create value to them and still give them ownership and not have to be a landlord and deal with all the stuff that becoming a landlord is and still make the profits and the cash flow and all the things that make sense, right? All right. So that's kind of where we're at. So the thing you mentioned earlier about you know doing a syndicate and how that's a really bad idea. So Jamil right here comments, the quickest ticket to jail is a syndication. He was the one that gave me the wisdom uh, when I first got into wholesaling seriously. You know, if you want to go to Amer if you want to be on American Greed, start a syndication. I love it. <laughs> no, but it's so true. Like I I don't. It's like Jamil. I I talked to Jamil about that. Uh, I don't think they would started their it's business the that way. They're not, not the they're intent. not crooks on purpose. They get, yeah. they put themselves in a place where they just don't, you know, <laughs> where they just don't fix the problem. Right. Right. They deny it. Like you get in a fight with your wife, fix the problem now rather than linger and get divorced. Right. <laughs> well, but we know it's not our fault when we fight with our wives. That's right. We're always right. <laughs> yeah. Always. Okay. So <laughs> let's go through the seller carry. Cause like I said, you know, it, it blew my mind when you, when, when you presented this to us a, a couple, a few weeks back, what is a seller carry? And then after that, what would you do if you're going to get started? So what, it, what is a seller carry? Because when I first hear seller carry, I'm thinking I'm going to you, the homeowner, and you're going to finance that deal, which is a traditional definition of seller carry. But when you're talking about seller carry, you're doing a different strategy. So can, can you elaborate right. what that means? Right. Well, you can do a combination, but let's just do like, that was, that was my goal today because I knew I was speaking to you. And I'm like, okay, if somebody was going to listen to this show mm -hmm. and they've never done real estate, but they want, I mean, the ultimate goal is to create some sort of, nothing's passive, but as close to passive as you can get 
and get to, you know, five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars a month, mm-hmm. which is basically, you know, cha- it's a game changer. Um, if you can, you know, what could I do to help that? So, yep. so number one is, um, uh, and I, I read a lot of like blogs and people are like, I don't have any money. I can't start. I can promise you when I knocked in that first door, uh, I didn't have any, I, I mean, I did have money, but I didn't have the ability to buy that house. You didn't have 50, but I had a 50K deal. lying around. No, I had a deal. Yeah. I had a deal. And then I found now in today's world, just in our market, but in every single market, there's somebody that would die for that phone call and say, hey, I've got this deal. Yep. Let's make some money today. Right. And, and they, you know, you know, I know the network that I'm in. We make, if I can't get rid of a house, I might call you or I might call someone else in our network and we make money. Like, mm-hmm. it's fantastic, right? right? So there's no excuse for that. There's yeah. none. Like I, I read about it. And I'm like, there's no excuse because you can get in your car and, and drive by and see a house with grass that's growing higher. And it's probably, it could be distressed somehow. Mm-hmm. You can find, you can figure out a way to find that person. Garage door is a little uneven. Or, or, or you, if you can't figure it out, someone online knows how to figure it out and doesn't even know. Cause pr- I promise you, you and I are not door knocking and driving by every day. <laughs> no. So we don't know what we don't know. Right? right. So anyway, so that's, that's my thing. So there's no excuse for that. Um, so back to the seller financing deal. So right now we can, I can get a house. I get a house sent to me, um, probably every couple of hours mm-hmm. that fit our model. Right. So we're, we, we want to buy a house somewhere in that 130 to 150 range. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and right now in our market in Phoenix, and this is all over the country, a lot of houses were bought at the bottom and were remodeled and rented. And now they're, they're, they're not their rental condition. Mm -hmm. So we can go clean it up and sell that for retail. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so what we do is we find that house. Um, and then what I, in the meantime, I have investors that are looking for a fair rate of return. Okay. Um, maybe they've made tons of money in Amazon. They cashed out before the market changes or something weird happens. And, uh, they want to get a fair rate of return. So I offer them a fair rate of return or I partner with them or something, yeah. but they're secured to that property, right? Right. So I find property A, I find the property, uh, I, I, I put it under contract with the wholesaler, with mm-hmm. you, with whoever, and then I have that money waiting in the wings to close on it, right? Yep. Then it's, it's pretty simple. Then I go and I have a real estate team, mm-hmm. but I've also, for fun, um, I've built a massive buyer's list of people that can't get a traditional mortgage, okay? Yep. And so now they are my, you know, a, a lot of the wholesalers are talking about their cash buyers list. Mm-hmm. These are my seller finance buyers list. So there's a <laughs> lot of them, yeah. a lot, a lot, 20, 30,000 down in our market. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. So there's a lot of people out there that 20 K to 30 K to put down that cannot get approved for a loan. And you have this list. Yes. It's amazing. Yes. Okay. So I have that list. Now I also have realtors that have that list. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many realtors out there have someone, but they just, they're, they're basing their whole world on getting a traditional loan. And so they, they lose a deal because of it. Yeah. Well, I can buy wholesale, sell retail. I'm not selling for 20, like there's other guys that do what I do around the country that market up 20, 30% over retail. And I'm like, no, that's not even like we can sell these for retail and make money. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can get a good down payment, a fair interest rate, you know, based Mm -hmm. off their financial situation, but we're putting themselves in a place where they can actually make the payment. And yeah. typically their payment's going to be five to 10% over uh, rent. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then they get the deduction. Okay. So, so anyway, property, I get the property, I got the lender lined up now. Keep, you So, so far I haven't spent a dollar of my own money. Right. Right. Okay. But I found the house yeah. that was sent to me in an email that mm-hmm. I could probably pay more than most wholesalers. Right. Cause you're more strategy. cash buyers. Cause I've got my, uh, my exit cash buyer on the, mm-hmm. on the hook that I don't have to do a $30,000 rehab. I might have to do a $5,000 rehab. Right. Right. So now that, that, so my, my underlying lenders here, my end buyers there wanting to buy a house and be a homeowner and we close the transaction. I make a little bit of money and my investor makes a little bit of money and then my agent gets a commission and life goes on. So, that's not one close though, right? That's two different closings. Right. So you have your, you have your acquisition mm-hmm. closing, pay, pay a few fees there. Mm-hmm. And then you, and then you have, uh, and, and the ultimate is find one long-term investor to fund your acquisition mm-hmm. and stay in place. Right. Yep. And then resell it and then create the cash flow in between. Just like, just like any rental property, you right. know? 
Um, but the rental property, here's the thing about the rental properties. So what do we have when we own a rental property? We have, and I, I just, one of my best friends, he lives in California and he um, manages his own properties and he's oh. been doing it forever. And it's, wow. his, it's his family deal and that's how they do it. That's right? weird. Anyway. So we just had an argument <laughs> this morning uh, and I said, listen, um, so, so what do we have? We have management, we have uh, maintenance, mm -hmm. vacancies, repairs, um, what was the last one? Anyway, we have the five or six different things that taxes, insurance. There we go. Yeah. So we have all that happening, right? Mm -hmm. When I do a seller finance house uh, deal, guess what? I don't have none of those things, and I have equity in the deal, depending. And so, you know, people talk about this, and, th and I'm, you know, this is something uh, we could have discussion about. People talk about depreciation and appreciation, and how it affects your taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, I just eliminated thirty percent, so. Is how does that look, right? Right. And then I have equity in the note that I've created because I know how to buy a house under market. The thirty percent you eliminated. You talking about you eliminated the the thirty percent of yeah. You know, well, well, like you know, you you get some da tax benefits for being a property owner mm -hmm. versus a seller finance. It's regular income, right, but right. and okay. I don't. I'm, I'm not a CPA. I'm not an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> Disclosure, but I just look at the real money that comes in mm -hmm. without the headaches. Yeah. Right. So let's let's highlight those six things there okay. again because that sounded great, right? So. Uh, vacancy. So you have, you have a property manager and, mm -hmm. and that's what I told my buddy. Well, okay. Um, so how much, how much is a property manager? Well, it's 8%. Okay. Do you have any vacancies? Do you have any, uh, so you have property management, vacancies, repairs, taxes, insurance. Well, I think we're missing one again. Well, there's but, turnover. Turnover. Right? So, and, and that, that includes vacancy, but that's new carpet because it seems like carpets oh, last and, about and a repair. year. And repair when yeah. you have to update it. Yeah. And, that, and that's why I said, he goes, oh, I had eviction. And I, well, how much are you gonna spend on that rehab? And then that doesn't include, depending on your property manager, a leasing fee. Absolutely. Right. No, this is all, and then my my fee is, it's between 10 and $18 a month for mm -hmm. a servicer. And guess who pays for that? The borrower. Right. So I don't pay any of that. Okay. And so I, I've eliminated, and I was telling you this earlier, I, I and this was so cool. So I get a call uh, from the servicer yesterday and there was a insurance claim, mm -hmm. okay? A uh, roof issue, whatever. And they're like, you needed to sign off on the check. And they thought the lender was here. And I'm like, no, just have them call me. So they call me and the sweetest lady ever, I've never heard from her ever. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know, actually, I knew it in my file who it mm -hmm. was, but I've never spoken to them. I never speak to yeah. them. My agents do all that. And she needed me to sign off on her insurance check. And so um, I, I said, okay, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll meet you. Cause I love, I mean, I love meeting them and see how appreciative she was so appreciative. She's like, Eric, I'm so happy to actually hear from the company that's lending me the money into my house. Yeah. And we're so happy and we're going to redo the roof, but we're going to pay a little extra because we want it to be a different color. So it matches this and matches that. And cause we rehab the house already and whatever. I'm like, oh my God, that's fantastic. Right. <laughs> Why not? Right. And so that to me, I get so pumped to have that, that call that they appreciate and they pay like right on time every month. Well, they have to. Or yeah, or they lose the house. Yeah. And, and they the put such thing, a chunk of money down that they're not gonna. And the thing you mentioned uh, briefly or casually was that they remodeled the house. Yeah, right? they updated it. I did some work, they did more work. But like a, if a tenant's like, hey, I wanna update the house, like, n like hell you are, <laughs> right? No, Do they actually the paint the walls of <laughs> the wrong, whatever, it, yeah. it's not. And now only that, now, now, now my asset just went up another 20% right. and my loan to value, I'm still covered, right? Yeah. Um, there, there's a few things that people, you know, they're like, well, what if the market um, uh, tanks? Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, I've put a fixed number in place on my cost of money mm -hmm. and I've given them a fixed number. Right. So God forbid the market crashes and mm -hmm. our houses are worth $25,000 again. Let's just say it happens. Mm -hmm. But they, where are they gonna move for 1400 bucks a month? Yeah. And oh, and still own, right? Right. Yeah. So there's a there's a risk there that I feel. This is just my opinion, mm -hmm. and we could talk about this ten years from now and be like, that was a mistake. But <laughs> I, I really believe that that, <laughs> that. And I mean, I can't tell you how many times I bought a house. Uh, this is a few months ago, and I went and met with a neighbor, mm -hmm. um, and uh, he's been there seventeen years. Yeah. That's what I want. Right. I want payments for seventeen years. Right. Right. <laughs> so okay. So starting over again. Um, step one. Right. I want to do, I want, I want to follow. Okay. The so, Eric you, so, model. so you've never done a deal ever. How do I do this? Well, I've, I've been doing wholesaling. Okay. Right? You want to, oh, you're talking about you, not so your, I'm, not your, not hypothetically, your Steve just <laughs> wants to get moved from wholesaling okay. to seller carry. So what's step one? Getting the money 
What's uh, I I personally because uh, I mean you can use my track record because mm-hmm. it works. Um, is is I would go find some private money. And so here here's the thing. So I was, ta- I, was I might have been telling you this before, but so you have your high high net worth people, right? Mm-hmm. They have tons of money, and if they can make a seven eight percent return over a lifetime now in today's world, mm-hmm. and they've already crushed it. That would be pretty good, right? Right. And so they they look at that as a diversified deal. They might have a huge estate and they don't want their kids to get a bunch of money, but they would give them income. Mm -hmm. So that's one place to maybe go raise some capital Mm -hmm. and and tell that story. Or you have somebody who's in their between 65 and 70, right? Mm -hmm. They want to retire and they have, let's just say, let's just say they've saved a million dollars and they have a million dollars left until they pass, right? Well, I feel my opinion, we're all going to live till about a hundred now. Yeah. I mean, I'm 46 years old. Uh, being a hundred years old is going to be nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so that 60, 70 year old person. Now I have another 30 years. They're going to outlive their money. Yeah. So I feel it's my obligation to help them get a great asset secured in first position, mm-hmm. a mortgage and get paid for, for ever. Right. With, and then keep the balance. Right. So maybe they take the interest, keep the principle. There's all sorts of ways to do it, but I feel it's an obligation for me as a really good real estate operator Mm -hmm. and knows how to find great deals and put them in a really good position. Um, Not 110%, but like 75, 70, I feel is a good place right now in today's market, even if there's a decline, um, that that they're going to get income. And it's amazing because, and I feel like I'm a really good private money raiser. um, with real estate is, is that, um, they, uh, once they start getting that money, <laughs> yeah. they, they can't, it's like, uh, I don't know what I did. I just get paid. Right. I'm like, so what's your, you know, and I, I, this is another thing. This happened to me the other day. So one of my, actually it was a few months ago, I asked my, one of my private guys, I'm like, so how's your, uh, debits and credits on your private lending business? And he goes, well, I don't really have any uh, debits. Mm -hmm. No, I don't have any, I don't, yeah, I don't have any debits. It's just credits. Right. The only debits I have is when I pull money out and put it into a loan. Mm -hmm. So you're not paying taxes, insurance, maintenance, repairs, any problems. Nope. I just get paid. So that, that line item is just income is what Mm -hmm. you're saying. You don't have all these other things. No employees. Do you have any employees in the business? Nope. None. So I decided, okay, how can I do this in the owner occupied world? And do that. So I know I got sidetracked a little bit on the, on the purpose behind this, but so raise the money, mm-hmm. go find some money that, that, that wants to do, let's use Phoenix as an example and that you get $150,000 in a first position to do your seller finance deal. Mm-hmm. Then properties are easy to find. I mean, right. you probably have one right now and you're on your list of houses that you're wholesaling that will fit. Hopefully, you know, yeah. and then, so then you do that, you buy it and then, and then you go and, and if you want to do it, slowly you you know i always have people go and look at it and do little little repairs so it's mm-hmm. moving ready like the big things is is i want the roof to be okay i want ac good plumbing and, and electrical and then let them go do the sweat equity all right i want the big stuff yeah taken care of you know for the most part but i have guys that come in and they're like no we'll do it all we'll do plumbing we'll do it all we'll, we just want a good deal okay so well, a good deal off retail might be five ten percent off mm-hmm. Where for us, that's like, we're happy if we don't have to do any work. Right. Right. So, <laughs> so you find the, the, the lender, yep. right. And then you have to have some sort of agreement with them. So yep. you're, you're paying interest right away, pay interest when so, they lend. So what I do, and this is obviously from, uh, this is uh, trial and error, mm-hmm. but what I do is I say, okay, we're going to fund this deal. This is what I'm doing with it. You're going to make a fair rate of return, mm-hmm. um, in a great position. You're going to get paid monthly amortized and I'm amortizing. So I'm front loading them just like a bank would. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, then from there, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, start your, your first payments, not for the first 60 days. Cause that gives me time to go clean it up and get it sold. Right. So I'm not doing a negative cash flow off the bat. Right. Um, that's the ultimate. It doesn't yeah, always work that way. That's huge. It doesn't 16. always work that way, but it, it, does it really matter to them? Like what's their money doing right now? It's sitting in cash earning le- like a 1%. Yeah. But that's smart on your part, giving yourself a 60 day head start. And it's an, it's a contract. Like, you know, after 60 days, if I don't sell it, um, then I'll start paying. But right. for the most part, that's how I structure it. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, you have, I think you mentioned before that you, you or someone got a loan originator license. So no, yeah. So what I did, I, I like to stay completely out. 
So now in order for me to qualify my uh, borrower, mm -hmm. so now I, the house is now for sale. Yeah. Keep in mind, all my houses are sold off market. I don't even put them on the market. Right. I send them either to my list and on my list is agents that mm -hmm. have buyers. So I'm good with that. I'll pay them a commission. I don't care. Um, and then a uh, uh, contract comes in mm -hmm. for the price we agree to. Then that goes right to my license originator. Um, and he underwrites them, make sure that they are majority of these borrowers. Um, they're stated, um, they, but he, he goes, he gets proof of payments, proof of income, proof of not it's everybody still a real underwriter. Oh, it's a full on most hard money lenders out there. Don't like to do owner awk because of that, the liability, mm -hmm. this guy's, these guys, that's their deal. Yeah. And so it protects me mm -hmm. because if they're like, oh, you sold me this house for X and I can't afford 1500 bucks a month. Well, it says here you did this, 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 and this. I just, I have him do it. I pay him a fee, mm -hmm. which actually the borrower pays for that, but he gets paid to do that. Mm -hmm. And then he reviews it with me and he signs off on it and it's done. So it's a, it's a fully underwritten originated loan. So it sounds like when we're ready to do that, I'm gonna have to get that guy's contact. That's right. Um, and then on top of that, you have a servicer, servicing company. So then, yeah. So, so right now I'm, I'm testing different servicers, but mm -hmm. in a perfect world, as we scale this out, we're going to have the same insurance guy. We're going to have the same servicer, same originator, but it's just process. Okay. So then that's the part that's kind of nuts, right? Is this, this crazy part where you, you've got this formula working now. Now to feed this machine, mm -hmm. you still got to find deals. That's right. Right. So how, who's bringing deals and what does a good deal look like to fit into this model? Well, so it, it, the main, right now I'm getting my deals. I'm still doing direct mail. I'm mm -hmm. still doing internet. I'm still doing all the same things. Like I'm right. still wholesaling houses. Yeah. Here's the, the greatest thing about this model is your goal for me and, and I, I would hope other people is to get that monthly cash flow mm -hmm. to offset your wholesaling business net income. And then once you get to that, then you're like, it's just, I mean, everything else is a bonus, right? right? right. I mean, buying and selling houses and helping um, distressed sellers get out from underneath their homes is a great business. Yeah. It's a great purpose mm -hmm. because I mean, I can't tell you how many people call me, you know, you call me from Tennessee mm -hmm. and you know, aunt so-and-so, uh, um, you know, gave you this house and you think you're gonna have to fly out and do all this stuff. Mm -hmm. No, did you know, I'll go and box all that stuff up and send it to you and you'll get a check wired to you. Yeah. How easy is that? Right. Oh my God, that's fantastic. You know, that's that's the value that we provide as uh, as wholesale buyers, but um, without, because they're not gonna be able to rehab it for what we can, mm -hmm. I mean, the whole spiel. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna tell you the spiel, so, it, but you guys know it. Are you getting more from your direct mail marketing and, paper, and online marketing versus another wholesaler bringing you a deal? So our direct mail's working mm -hmm. um, and it's like, it's very competitive. I mean, we're competing against everyone else, but honestly, um, um, I've slowed down a little bit. And the reason why, I don't know if I told you this, but I have a fund that is gonna fund my deals. And mm -hmm. so like a pretty large fund. So I've, I've slowed down. I haven't been really building my private money business that much because this fund said they want to do it and the numbers make sense. And at that point I can just, I can go to every wholesaler and probably pay more than anybody and still make right. the numbers work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. then it's just an arbitrage game at that point. Right. Um, and it's non-recourse, which is good. Huge, <laughs> huge. That was what, the, that was, that was what Chris, I'm in. I uh, said in the show a couple weeks ago, like if you had to do it all over again, what will he do differently? Ask anybody that's <laughs> our age that has been in the business as long as we have, what would they say? Non-recourse. Non we all, we all got caught. Yeah. Um, but you learned eventually. So Scott Charles got a question. Uh, so we talked about finding the high net worth individuals, right? To, to fund your operation, or mm -hmm. in this case, you got an investor group. How would you go find an investor right now to, to fund all this? Well, um, there's, there's so many different ways, but I'll, I'll just give you a simple one, mm -hmm. which is it, uh, chances are, I, I have a friend of mine, he's 36 years old. He's had two different jobs. Okay. Mm -hmm. But two different jobs from 25 to 36, he's probably got two, three, no, I actually no, he has like $600,000 in 401k money from two different places. Right. But now he's starting job number three. Okay. Well, that money at 36, he can't touch it until he's 59 and a half. Right. Mm -hmm. So that money is sitting idle doing well, it's in the 401k that they left it or whatever, 
But what if you could t help him self-direct that money mm -hmm. in his self-directed IRA and then use that as your funding? Right. Now, there's, it's, we call it the $4.7 trillion secret, which if, if you guys email me, you'll give me information, I'll send you the book because we mm -hmm. wrote a book called the $4.7 trillion secret. Mm -hmm. So it's, pri it's how to raise private money, how to, but, and it's not a, it's not a syndicate. It's not, it's tell people, what do you ask, ask anybody, what are you doing with your idle cash? Well, what are you earning? Mm -hmm. Probably between one now, I guess CDs are going up a little bit, but be, under 2%, right? Right. Maybe 2%. Yeah. But Let's before be it was like, it's yeah. Right. Yeah. So you can't make money doing that. That's not even inflation. So if you offered them seven, eight times that, and mm -hmm. you can still make money or you partner with them on the cash flow, or you part, part if you've never done it before, maybe you do a little of both, mm -hmm. but just as long as the cash flow makes sense for you, for your time, that's right. what you do. So there is so much money out there right now. And, and, and I have, I, I actually did. I was talking to one of my, uh, uh, buddies the other day. Um, he sold his company and, and, uh, he's a company guy. He likes to buy companies and, you know, buy something for a million, sell for 10 million or whatever. Right. That but I'm like, really I'm like, fun. yeah, but what are you doing with your idle cash? Yeah. Well, it's in the stock market and it's doing this and I, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, okay, well, are you getting income from that mm -hmm. monthly income? I mean, what are you getting from that? Is it, is it amortized out? Is it, I mean, how does that look? Could there be a change? Could yeah. the Tesla owner do something stupid and drop the, drop the <laughs> freaking stock market? I mean, all of that, like, how does that look, you know? And then wh and where is that cash flow coming? Is it mm -hmm. coming from an end borrower that's, you know, thanks God every day that they have a home to live in with their family. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, they'll bring in another family to pay the payment. Like, right. it's not sexy. It isn't. It's just, it just works. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> I mean, so, so that, that, so to answer your question on the private money, there's, there's, it's everywhere. Just tell everybody that you have deals and you're willing to pay X amount. And mm -hmm. if you're interested, let's, let's do some deals. Let's do some business. Well, I think I heard you say before too, you don't even tell them what you're willing to pay. It's like, what do you, what are you willing to take? You, you can do that. I mean, I'm yeah. pretty open about mm -hmm. what, I mean, I, 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 I'll tell you right now, I pay, if I do a flip, it's 10% deferred, mm -hmm. no points. Pay them and I guarantee three months on a, on, a, on a flip. So it's secured, they fund the deal. I've been doing this a long time, they get paid back. Mm -hmm. um, all my private lenders, I've never defaulted on a private lender ever in my history and I've borrowed a, a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then my long term, I, I, I try to get six or seven, you yeah. know? And people have a hard time with that. Like they, they're like, wow, that's not very much. Okay, well, what are your options? Right. I mean, let's be honest. Now, if you want to be passive, mm -hmm. that's a pretty darn good return. And it's collateralized. It's collateralized. You want to, so, so I was telling what buddy the other day, I said, okay, you have, um, so I give you a thousand a month for 60 months and you give me 150,000. 60 months later, you owe 90. Now your risk is 90 mm -hmm. on a house. It's even if it drops to 150 or 130, you know, that's still, you could sell that and get your money back right. pretty easily. In fact, I'll buy it from you mm -hmm. for that. You know, right. So, so just as long as you're, so that's kind of, that's why I love the lending world. That's why I love that deal. And, and really the end result is who, who you're helping at the end, at the end, you know, you're helping this, this guy get his income. You make a little bit of money. You're never dealing with banks. It's just, it's, it's quick and you're providing a good service. Um, Candace Walton wants to know, uh, what's the difference between a lease option and seller finance? So a lease option is you own the house. Um, uh, uh, so for example, I buy the house, and I own it and then I, I take maybe 10,000 down and I give them an option to buy. So let's use round numbers. Let's just say uh, um, I buy the house for 150, I sell it on a lease purchase for 170, take 10,000 down and then they have five years, two, two to five years to, to give me the, the 160 that they mm -hmm. owe me, something like that. Um, but I still own the house. Right. I still have the responsibility for taxes, insurance, maintenance, all that stuff. I, I've I've been successful with a lease purchase. I have, um, but I I like it. I almost want closure. Like it's done now, mm -hmm. unless they sell it or refinance it. Yeah. As a lease purchase, um, I've done really well with lease purchases. But I I don't um, I don't like the responsibility of being being an owner. There's liability. Right. There really is. I mean, you have you have all the things that go with it. That, so, if I was going to pick one of the two, I'd do the other one. Right. And as a seller carry, they're the owner. They're the owner. Lease option, you're the owner. I'm the, I'm the owner, yep. Right. Yeah, and they're then, the owner. And then we talked about pride of ownership. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but you know, if I was driving down a neighborhood, I'm, I'm seeing Eric's seller 
carry property. Yeah. And I'm seeing someone else's rental rented property. What what's the difference? So so uh, great great question. So I I bought a house. I don't know. Let's say six months ago. Um, it was in good shape. It wasn't it wasn't the best house on the street. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the worst, but it fit their move in criteria, right? Yeah. So they put their money. I think they put twenty five thousand down or whatever. So a month later, I was going to go drive by that. I was driving to go look at another property, um, meet my agent over there. And um, there was a house. You know, there's they redid the landscaping. There's flowers out front. Um, it's painted. I mean, it's it's like the nicest house on the street. And I'm like, how awesome is that? Like, yeah. that's not a rental property. They own that house mm-hmm. and they'll and they'll and, and they pay. I mean. I made a mistake. I, I made a mistake one month where they actually paid early, and I couldn't figure out. I'm like, God, I don't think they paid. Well, they paid too early. <laughs> I couldn't figure out the the books weren't right on that month or something. So, but yeah, that's that's the deal. Okay, so then let's go back to an example. Um, I I get your mailer, call you, mm-hmm. hey Eric, you know I got this house. It's worth two hundred open market. It's a little bit of disrepair, right? Where are you buying it at for it to make sense? for this model? And then what are you doing? What, what are exact steps you take after that? So house comes in uh, to our team, if it's me or the agents or so who, it's 200 whoever. 200 in Maryvale yep, yep. and it's, and it needs 15. Right, so that, well, Maryvale is now 220. So whatever, yeah. <laughs> anyway, no, that's a seller finance house around uh, be 210, 220. So what I do um, is I, uh, the first thing I do is I take the call and f- figure, figure out what the best price we can go to, mm-hmm. right? Um, let's, uh, we really, depending on repairs, we probably need to be around 150 ish. Yeah. Um, but so, so that, that would fit. So then I literally text my agent and be like, Hey, what could we sell our finance assets for? Mm-hmm. And he'll be like, Oh, well, I have someone in my database that likes that area and they want to, um, they, they have 30,000 and they'll pay probably 215 mm-hmm. and they can afford this much a month, which I already know those numbers. That's, that's, that's it. So, so that's, I, I, cause I know the exit, mm-hmm. that's the most important part. And then I know my cost of funds and I know I could resell it for them what their payment typically is. And then I just back into what I want to make, you know? Okay. And, and typically for, for I, I really, I think four to five, 450, 400 to 450 is a good number to take the risk. I think anything less than that, I think, you know, Elaborate. even though they're spreading the deal, 400 I think, as in cash flow? cash flow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's kind of my. So if you're not making 400 to 450 cash flow, that doesn't really make sense. No. It doesn't fit the box. No, or I just haven't put more money down or whatever. So you can play the deal, but yeah. I, that's kind of the, the round figures. Okay. And or then, with a rental property, typically you're gonna put 20% down, you're gonna rehab it, and then you're gonna leverage it. And then you're gonna pay all those expenses and get what, 200 bucks a month, yeah, maybe? pretty much, with the headaches. With the headaches. Expenses and headaches. I mean, the turnkey, like, believe me, I tried to get in the, tur- I was looking at turnkey all over the country, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, I really thought it was a good model. But when it was all said and done, like there's no money left over. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable. And not to mention all the turnkey markets that are crushing it right now, mm-hmm. ask them what their property taxes are every year. They're, they're three times certain markets. I yeah. won't say our market, but they're, they're <laughs> keep it quiet. Okay, so <laughs> then let's go back to uh, the property you picked at 450, right? Because seller carry, it's not just the cash flow, which is an amazing part of it but there's front end, there's back end. So let's talk about all the different. Yeah, so typ- typically, you know, you uh, the, the the average wholesale was 7,500 to 10 grand, mm-hmm. the wholesale fee right now these days in our market. Um, I, you can typically in our seller finance world with the down payment and the cost of rehab and the closing costs and all that stuff, there's three to 5,000 left over mm-hmm. profit upfront for us, yeah. okay? I, I typically like to get more, but we're not going to squabble over that because I'm also getting another five thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. So it's five k up front. Yeah, yeah, typically about five grand up front. Five k cash flow per year. Per year, That's not stopping. Per year for like thirty years, right? Well, let's just say it goes five. Yeah, sixty months, you know. Yeah. So. So that's thirty grand mm-hmm. plus the five. That's thirty five. Plus, plus the profit when they do. There's sell typically because we're selling at retail mm-hmm. and we're buying wholesale, so there might be. 2025 in that deal too. Right. Now, obviously they pay it down a little bit, but you're also doing the same on your side. So what I did is I amortized both sides so that mm-hmm. we're not catching up to each other. What do you other. mean? So if I have a loan here, let's just say 150 amortizing at seven mm-hmm. and I sell it over here and then loans 180 at eight and a half percent amortizing, 
I just want them to kind of move along together on the amortization. Right, right. So, so it doesn't catch up and go past it. That's so, the right way to do it. So you're doing cash flow on the difference in the mortgage payments. Mm -hmm. And on the arbitrage little, as well. Little, arb yeah, little cash flow on the on the amortization too. So right. if you get an amortization calculator, you can kind of figure it out. But right. I mean, it's an extra maybe 100 and 150 bucks maybe. Nothing to sneeze at. I mean, if you got savings. 10 of those. It's like savings. You got 10 of those. That's it, real money. But but that the, here's the thing. Like the, the spread in the note is great. Mm -hmm. um, the, client, the, the borrower has equity. But I just look at that as a bonus, you know? Yeah. The thing refinances. I mean, the reality is I my ultimate goal on a lot of these, I want to be the lender on this property forever. Right. So if someone contacts me and says, oh, I'm selling the house. Really? Um, who's the buyer? You know, can I can I have an option to be their lender? Yeah. Because why not? Right. Why wouldn't you? And then you just start over again, <laughs> yeah. you know? So, so you don't have to, you know, go find a place for your um, investor's money. And so, you know, you've acquired a few of these. Like I think 18 months ago, you started taking this refocus back on how can I do less, enjoy more, mm -hmm. right? Actually get to travel with your family, you know, right. dream of every real estate agent that, ne that never does it. Did I tell you, so did I tell you what I did this summer? No. So, so, th so there's a company, you guys can Google it. It's called Mind Valley. And so Mind Valley goes to a different country every year for mm -hmm. a month. And it's like personal development, business. It has all sorts of stuff. So my wife's goal in her life was like, we need to go to a country every year. And I'm like, okay, let's work that out. Mm -hmm. So we, so we, so we did it. So we were there for two weeks. Um, we were in Estonia, mm -hmm. which is near Russia. I okay. didn't know that at the time, but I was, we were there. And so, uh, with our note business, like I literally didn't do anything. Like I didn't take a call. I mean, yes, we didn't do, we had some marketing going that was being taken care of by our agents, but the note business still paid. They, mm -hmm. the, the, the money still came in. I didn't have to deal with it. It works that way with re rental properties too, but we were literally gone for almost 20 days in a different country doing our thing you know, having fun. And then this year, this summer, we'll, I think that they do it. We're gonna try to do it for the month for our kids. You know, I don't know if they wanna do that or not, but we'll so figure it out. So our audience right now is wholesalers, right? These yeah. are prim predominantly people who are listening to the show right now. Mm -hmm. So what we're telling these wholesalers is that it's very realistic that if they wanted to switch gears, they could in 12 months potentially acquire 12 seller carry properties. Absolutely. Right? And with the 12 seller carry properties, Let's just say 400 a month, right? Yeah, so instead of five grand, right? instead of wholesaling for 10K, mm -hmm. just get 5K up front, have passive income mm -hmm. and have 10 of those, that's four grand a month, passive, and you can go hang out with Eric in Estonia <laughs> yeah. or wherever Mind Valley is going next. Well, here's the thing. The, the wholesaling business, you will never stop, right? We're mm -hmm. always going to be marketing, right? Always on the go. Always market. Always, always, always market. Always tell people that you're a cash buyer. <clears throat> but when that deal comes along that fits that deal, mm -hmm. then you can wake up um, a year later, five years later. I don't know what your overhead needs to be. I mean, mm -hmm. we talked about this earlier. I mean, how much money do you really, you know, making $500,000 a month wholesaling houses with 47 employees and a <laughs> million dollars a month in marketing makes sense for some people. For me, not so much. I, right. I don't need that. I'll buy all those properties that they produce and I'll create a cash flow. But I, I really believe the wholesalers, it's really hard for the wholesalers with these big operations mm -hmm. to look at 400 a month as, as like, this is exciting. Yeah. But they're doing so much volume. I'm like, what if you just did 60, how, five a month? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're doing 30 houses a month, do five a month. And now you have 60 properties at 400 a month. I mean, that's 24,000, that's, that's 300 grand a year. It's okay. That pays some bills. It does, <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. Not to mention any spread and all this other stuff going on. Right. Not to mention you're helping the world with, uh, you know, some some uh, retirement people getting income and, and not losing their wealth, and then, you know, helping other homeowners get a, a home to live in. Because that's opportunity that's opportunity to buy when the when that opportunity was not available. Otherwise. Yeah. So I mean, that's that's why I look at it. I mean, um, I love wholesaling. I mean, we all do because mm -hmm. it's quick cash and. It's great, but uh, I, I think that this is an, that where we're at in our market is um, there's an opportunity. Yeah. I, I mean, could we see a correction and a big drop? I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like we talk about it. Mm -hmm. It's possible. We could have a black swan event, but I think it's highly unlikely to have another. I, we here's what I feel. I'll, I feel that there's credit, mm -hmm. but it's but it's different credit. Housing credit is 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 I think stable. Yeah. That's my opinion. <laughs> um, so Scott Charles asks again, how would you build a list of buyers for these properties? So, um, bandit signs, 
Mm, okay. um, let me see if I can. I don't have my phone with. It. I, I. It's just you know sell. What, what do I don't even. I haven't. Put, I haven't personally put these out. So they mm. just call in to our office. Oh yeah, no, you see them in the corner, right? Three bedroom, you know, two bath, three, pool, yeah. fifteen hundred a month. Call for details. That's right. Yeah, that's it. So and just it, and it'll build. I, I mean, I, I think we have five, six hundred of them right now. Yeah. But really, the that and our I, I have relationships with realtors that manage that list for me. So mm-hmm. I, I don't really. Uh, uh, I, I probably would have, as I grow, I mean, we're, we're close, but I'll have a disposition manager that that's their whole deal is meeting yeah. with these sellers. And it's the coolest Sounds thing. Sounds like an employee. I don't know. We're, we're working through it. <laughs> we're working through it. <laughs> um, all right. So one, uh, I mean, with what everything you're talking about right now, do you have like a calculator or something that says, okay, here are the numbers. And it makes sense. So uh, my business is not that sophisticated, but I do have a calculator that I use on my phone. It's called Carl's Calculator. <laughs> if it's in the App Store, I think it's it's free. Okay. And I just plug in the numbers. I plug Carl's in Calculator. Carl's Calculator. I don't. I my phone's off because I didn't want the alarm to go off. But um, so Carl's Calculator. Throw that in, and then you just figure out where you want to be. What's my What's my cost? Mm-hmm. What's my interest? What's my resale? What's their interest? Amortized. There's your spread. And then, well, and then obviously you, you add taxes and insurance on top because you're not paying that. Right. So now you know. So now you know, okay, what can my typical borrower pay mm-hmm. in this specific market to be a homeowner? Yeah. And, and right now, I think the most is like 1600 mm-hmm. with taxes and insurance to be yeah. a homeowner in Phoenix, Arizona. Right. That's not bad, right? Yeah, even if the economy tanks, I mean, 1600 is still- For a still... three bedroom, two bath house, block construction, newer, not newer, rehabbed, like that's pretty good, right? Yeah. For the rest of our careers, that's pretty good. Right. And if that's your what you're owing your guy. No, that's that's no. That's oh, that's not, not what, what, what you're owing no, your no, guy. No, no, no. I'm owing them less than that. <laughs> yeah. So you should be even if the market dips and rent dips, you're still going to be okay. And and here's the thing, like let's say you have it goes it's like the wholesale world. Mhm. And all the big wholesalers that are that are buying in our market, deal comes through, boom, they're like I'll take it. Right. Well, you do 20 a month. You might have a couple. You might have three that you overpaid. Mm-hmm. Pay the money and go to the next one. Right. Right? Exactly. That's the hardest thing to do as a real estate investor. Write a check on a bad deal. It's a lot but easier. But it's the best though. thing to do. It's a lot easier <laughs> than keeping it. That's right. Uh, so one other thing, too, is you were talking about the value of a mentor. What can you talk about on that? Well, I'm... I'm uh, uh, So with technology today, you know, mm-hmm. podcasts, your podcast, like... There's so much information out there. So I, I truly, uh, I've been, I've been, I'm in masterminds. I, uh, I, I've had a mentor. I, I found how I found my mentor is I brought them value. Yeah. I'm like, here's this deal that you've been door knocking for 18 months. Right. Let's make money, and we did. And you know what the greatest thing about my very, very, very first deal? That seller still, that homeowner still lives in that house today. Really? In fact, I've been, you know, I haven't been in the area, but I can't wait to go door knock them and give them a big hug and. I mean, they were losing their house right. within within days, yeah. and they're still there with their kids. Their kids are probably older now, but a lot older. But they're <laughs> there. Like I pulled it up on the tax record. Same people. Very cool. So that's I mean that's the value that a real estate investors can provide people. You know, yeah, to you do solve that. their problem. So so back to mentorship. I mean, I'm I get up every morning. Uh, one I, I would say one of the biggest things that has helped me personally as a mm-hmm. personal development side world is I've been I meditate. Yeah. And so uh, every morning I get up, I lay in my bed, tr- tr- uh, try not to like fall asleep again. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, I take, you know, 10, 15 minutes and I give, I ask for, um, you know, what am I grateful for? You know, mm-hmm. start with gratitude. I always start with gratitude. I mean, it could be as little or as big as you want that gratitude to be for that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, and then I pray, you know, I pray for, it could be, it, obviously my family, but people I don't know, I mean, pray for you. I pray for you today. I was like, this is going to be the best freaking podcast we ever, you'll ever have. No. It's pretty uh, good. And so, um, and then I asked for abundance, like th- ha- asking for greatness to happen to you every day. Mm-hmm. And then you get your group, your wife, your kids, mm-hmm. your the people in your network to do the same thing. It's the corniest thing in the world, but greatness happens. Oh, it like, does. We wouldn't be sitting here right now, in my opinion. It, it, you know, I know there's the secret and all that stuff, but it's the corniest thing to do consistently over time. It pays off. Right. It's unbelievable. Well, it, right? you get what you ask for. Yeah, you right. do. And so 
that's changed my life. I mean, I, uh, I, I, I've been doing that. Um, I'm not super religious, but I'm very spiritual, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think that that just, if you start your day that way, you know, I, I mean, I get up really early, like five, and then I exercise and then I listen to when it comes to mentorship, mm -hmm. there's a million podcasts out there. I mean, your podcast, I mean, I listened to a few uh, before we came uh, on the show uh, earlier in the week. I mean, there's some freaking smart people out there. Yeah, there are. Like amazing. And then if you just take a little bit of what they learn and implement it, you know. Who knows what can happen. It's amazing. Uh, and then the value of an accountability partner. What would you, what are your thoughts on that? <clears throat> so uh, probably a year or so ago, it's been longer than that. I, I hired an accountability coach. Okay? okay. So I pay him. I don't know what I pay him a month. Actually, I do. But he calls me. Um, and this, this doesn't matter at what level you're at. I mean, if you're just beginning mm -hmm. or if you're, you know, you've got 350 seller finance deals out there. Um, having somebody that you can talk to that's a third party that can keep your shit together mm -hmm. and ask you why you're not doing X. And it's not your wife. Right. I've tried using my wife for years. It doesn't work. I don't know why. But we work with each other. We help. Yeah. But we each have our own little accountability team member. Mm -hmm. And they we go over well, where we're at personally, professionally, and they just keep us together. And I, I think that that's the biggest uh, that to me is a game changer. Yeah. Because they'll they'll call you out. Yeah. No, it's great. I mean, I have exactly. The and same you thing can go online and find anybody will be your accountability partner, but yeah. pay them. Like actually pay them. It's worth ever. It's worth the investment. Pay them. The only difference I would, or the only uh, nuance I would add to that is that there are some life coaches out there that have no idea what they're doing. Don't go to those guys. Go to people that. Y yeah, I mean my my guy's awesome. He. I, well, I'm not talking I, about I, you specifically. No, no, I know, I know. But you know what? So here's the thing. Like, okay, so I I go back and forth on this, but there's gurus out there that teach how to make money in real estate, right? Mm -hmm. And those gurus haven't done a deal in ever. <laughs> yeah. And I. And I but, and I've been involved with all a lot of them because I'm 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 a geek. I love learning, right? Yeah. But here's the thing: you can be a really, really, really good coach, and not be good at that that deal. You know what I mean? I do. I, I'm personally, I would say I'm an okay coach. I want to get better at it because mm -hmm. I love sharing. I mean, I hope you can tell I love sharing what I'm doing because yep. it's it's life changing. Like it changes people's lives. But um. But there are people that are really good coaches, mm -hmm. and 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 to be a good coach, I mean, you're just trying to keep people accountable to to go to the next level, right? Right. So I I don't I don't know. I mean, it's a different skill. It's a great skill. So, and I I hear what you're saying yep. because uh, one of my favorite examples for this is the Phoenix Suns coach back in the seven seconds or less. Did you ever go watch some pregame shooting around? Mm -hmm. So the Suns coach, so you got, they took Boris Diaw, made him a great three-point shooter. Yep. Everyone was an amazing three-point shooter during, during the seven seconds or less era, right? But if you look at the Suns shooting coach, he would go out there and correct their form and make sure they're shooting well, and they were. And he had the worst freaking form I've ever seen. I'm passionate about jump shots, yeah, yeah, shooting yeah. it right, getting your yeah, elbow yeah. in, follow yeah. through, fingers spread, all that good stuff, right? Yeah. The guy couldn't shoot worth anything. But he's a great coach. Great shooting coach, yeah. amazing shooting coach. But I guess the reason why I was adding that nuance is there are some people out there they have no idea what to do whatsoever. Make sure mm -hmm. they at least know what to do in order to hold you accountable. Well, and they, and everybody's personalities are different. Yeah. So just as long as you're in line, I, I I know. I mean, you know, as your business, I mean, who do you go to mm -hmm. to keep you, yeah, on your game? Right. Right. Like, I mean, you, for me, you, you can have a spiritual coach. You have your. I mean, I went to spin class today. This gal, she's 50, I think she just turned 54. I mean, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. I think yeah. she did, this is her fourth spin class today at by <laughs> noon, I don't know. And she is amazing. She crushes it and she keeps me motivated and coming back to do that. I just, I just love, I just love it. And I don't know, if anybody spins, it's, it's fun. You sweat, <laughs> you sweat to death. Out there. Um, uh, as we wrap up, is there any lasting thought or last thoughts you want to add? Um, no, I mean, I, I think that um, what we're doing today is mm -hmm. just another tool in the toolbox, right? Right. Um, there's opportunities out there. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, oh, the $4.7 trillion secret. Did we, ta did we yeah. talk about that yep. earlier? I have a book. I'll give it to you. So uh, if you can, um, you guys can email me at eric at ericbuyshomes.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'll give that to you guys. It's about private money and the whole thing. Um, and I don't know. I just... Being starting, uh, you know, almost 15 years ago, 
the key for me in this business is is ca is cash flow. Like I think cash flow is the key, yeah. and 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 make it as passive as possible. So that would be my that'd be my thing. Do you have anything for me? Uh, no. I mean, it's a massive inspiration. I mean, I, I, when I heard you speak about seller care, I was like, I got to have this guy on the show and pick his brain because I want to do this. Yeah. And we're, we're gonna do this. Okay. So guys. Um, if you got, again, value from the show, please share this episode right now. And if you guys want to get a hold of Eric House, we talk about Eric at ericbuyshomes.com. Eric at ericbuyshomes.com is good. And then, or, or go to ericbuyshomes.com. Mm -hmm. Our phone number's on there. Okay. I don't even know the phone number on the website because yeah. <laughs> I never use it, but it'll get to me. It'll get okay. to our office. Yep. Cool. Uh, and then we do have a special guest tomorrow at four o'clock. It's unusual, but he's an out-of-towner. So anytime someone's flying in from out of town, uh, if they want to do a show, they're gonna. We'll always be glad to have them, so long as you know they've got a track record. Uh, so Zadie, he's had 100k months, and he's gonna share how he's done that. Uh, again, Eric, thank you for being on the show. Awesome, appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, I hope I helped Thanks, out. Thanks, guys. Oh, uh, you definitely did. If nothing else, you inspired me. Right? Good. Yeah, hey, that's what that's what it's about. <laughs> All right, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.